Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 37. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create forms using HTML and CSS. So just a little disclaimer over here, because we only know HTML and CSS and because this is an only an HTML and CSS tutorial series, um, all we are going to be doing with the forms is learning how to place a form into our browser and then uh, basically how to make it look pretty with CSS, make it look a little bit better. I am not going to be showing you guys how to send emails or store uh, the information that gets filled in in this uh, form into a database because to do all of that stuff, you need to know PHP or a little bit of JavaScript. So you're going to need to know one of the two. Uh, in fact, if you want to store stuff in a database, you're going to have to know PHP, end of story, no JavaScript allowed. All right. So uh, yeah. Basically, once you're finished with the series, move on to PHP. If that's something you want to learn how to do, if that's not something you want to learn how to do, and you only want to be a front end web designer or a front end web developer, then uh, you don't have to worry too much about that. But I just thought I'd start off with that disclaimer so that uh, you guys all know that uh, you need to move to JavaScript or to PHP when you're done with the series, right? So. Uh, now let's take a look at how to create forms. So you can see I've gone ahead and cleared out pretty much all of the code in my body. And we're starting off with like the same uh, template that we've been using for the past couple tutorials, or at least some of the earlier tutorials uh, with the addition of uh, the style sheet to a Google font, which I can probably have probably have removed for a while now. Anyway, um, now let's take a look at how to create a form. So. Uh, in HTML, whenever you want to add a form to your website, you type the word form and that opens up a form tag, right? Um, if you're using Sublime, you can just hit enter and it'll auto complete for you. Now that's awesome. So we have a form on our website. This doesn't actually look like anything. If you save this now and come back over to the browser, does nothing actually happens. It doesn't show anything up, right? Um, and uh, Part of that is because the form is just kind of the outside container. There's still a lot of stuff that we need to place in here, but there is some missing information that I want to talk to you guys about, which goes in the opening form tag. Uh, and that missing information is an action. So every form needs an action and every form needs a method, right? So these are two attributes that we need to take care of. Right. So an action is basically a place where you want to send the information that gets filled in in this form. Um, now, right now, we don't know PHP or uh, JavaScript. I'm just assuming. Right. So uh, basically what you would do here is put like uh, the name of another page dot PHP and hopefully it's a dot PHP or a dot uh, JavaScript file or something. So you can actually manage the data that gets sent uh, through this form and do something with it. But for now, because we don't know HTML, I mean, we don't have no PHP or JavaScript. I'm just going to leave this one blank, right? So just leave it blank and you can uh, still learn how to create forms, but we're not going to be sending the data anywhere just yet. Right. Then the next thing is a method. So a method I'm going to explain to you guys, uh, you basically have two options here. You either have get or you have post, right? So if you're using get, uh, basically what happens is uh, if you ever take a look at the browser after submitting a form using a get variable, you'll see an extra question mark added to the uh, URL with variable names like var is equal to 12 um, and then something like um, ampersand name is equal to uh, Quinton, that kind of stuff. So you'll see these these sorts of things added to the end of your URL of your website. And that's basically what happens whenever you use the get method is it just sends the variables or any information that's in this form uh, through the URL, which obviously isn't very secure, especially if you're working with passwords, you'll be able to see the person's password up here. So that is why we have the uh, post method. And uh, basically the post method is a lot more secure. It hides the data away from uh, people or prying eyes. So it won't be up here in the uh, URL. Um, and also uh, you can send a lot more stuff, right? Because if you're using the get method, your URL is going to be like, <laughs> you know, really, really long. Uh, whereas if you're using the post method, if you have a long form, uh, it's easier to send more data through, right? 
Okay, so that is uh, your action and your method, right? Now let's take a look at some elements that go within our form. And I want to introduce you to three elements today, right? So, um, well, it's actually one element with three different types. So uh, basically go ahead and type in input and uh, that is an input tag, which will typically go within a form. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit uh, enter on this input tag. And you can see by default, Sublime gave me a type and a name, right? Because all input elements, if you're sending this data through to somewhere, um, you're gonna need a type for display purposes and then a name to manage uh, whatever got filled in here, right? So let's go ahead with type of text. And you'll notice that even if you don't fill in text, uh, text is the default. So um, basically, whether you fill in text here or not, uh, this first element is gonna look completely uh, the same either way, right? Then name. Uh, basically, this is the name that you give to your elements whenever you want to uh, manage whatever data got filled in here. Um, so I'm just going to give this um, a value of name, right? Um, and this just means that later on in PHP, if we want to find out what the user typed in here, we'll refer to this as name, right? Then uh, I wanna add one more attribute in here, which is placeholder and placeholders are uh, new to HTML5, although HTML5 has been around for quite a while now. And uh, basically a placeholder allows you to type something in here like your name and whatever you put within uh, these quotation marks is what's going to appear as a placeholder in the element. So let's come back here to the browser and refresh. And now you can see I have an input element over here, um, but um, maybe let's just zoom in a little to make that uh, a little bit more visible to you guys, right? Uh, so we have uh, a value over here that's already filled in, which is your name, right? And um, yeah, basically when you click on that, you can type in your name, right? Uh, and that's basically all this form allows us to do right now. So let's go ahead and add in a few more uh, fields. So something else we can do is copy this one down and then change the type from text to password. Uh, and then we'll change the name of this to password. And then we'll change the placeholder of this to your password, right? So now if you save this and you jump back over to the browser, and refresh, you now have a field for a name and a field for a password and the placeholders are showing up, just letting you know that uh, you can fill in a name here and a password here, right? So if you go ahead and fill something like this in, um, you'll notice that password, uh, whenever you type here, uh, it will hide away the characters. So you get these like uh, bullet points uh, so it's just encrypted, uh, which is what you'd expect from a password, right? If you were using a value like uh, text for a password, or if you just didn't fill in a type for this password, basically what would happen is, um, yeah, you'd type something in like uh, your name over here and then password would be visible to the user. And that kind of sucks. You don't really want uh, the password to be visible like that. Uh, so you want to change that to have a type of a password just so that the browser hides it away, right? And then the last input element I want to talk to you guys about is uh, an input element that we're gonna have to have on every single form we ever uh, create. Um, and the reason for that is because it is gonna be the submit button. Uh, so you can get rid of placeholder because we're not gonna need a placeholder here. And then you wanna change the type to submit. So type is equal to submit name, I'd say for a submit button, you don't have to worry about giving it a name, but you do want to give it a, a value. And the reason why you want to give it a value is because whatever you place within the value is going to be what uh, appears on the button, right? So if you type um, send over here, then you'll have a button that says send. If you type submit over here, you'll have a button that says submit. So let's save this, come back over to the browser and uh, refresh. 
And now you can see I've got a submit button over here and it says send. But like I said, whatever I type in the value over here, like submit, that is what's gonna show up on the actual submit button. Now you'll notice that uh, right now, all of these uh, fields appear next to each other and you might want them to be one below the other. So sometimes you'll see people do this with a the form. They'll add line breaks uh, after each element. So if we save this now and come back over to the browser and hit refresh, um, they appear one below the other, right? Other times you'll see people surround them in uh, paragraph tags. Um, Oopsie, okay, let's just get rid of that and start this from the beginning. So paragraph, and then your input element, right? And then ending paragraph. And they'll do this with uh, each one of the elements. So uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of time consuming to go through this whole process, but uh, nevertheless, I will get it done, right? So sometimes people uh, surround the elements with paragraphs like that, and it does um, a similar sort of effect, except it gives a little bit of uh, spacing, right? And other times, instead of using paragraphs, people will just use uh, divs or something like that. So uh, basically, yeah, just keep in mind that if you want to create a specific layout for your elements on your page, um, if you want them to appear one below the other or something like that, uh, you can always add in other HTML around these elements. So let's hit save, uh, come back over to the browser, refresh, and there we go, that's what it looks like, right? So you'll notice that uh, if you fill all of this in now and you hit submit, um, it basically refreshes the page and that's because the action is set to a blank uh, file instead of another file's name. And just so you can see the difference between uh, what happens if this is blank and if there's something filled in over here, let's just say this was um, uh, set to something like login.php just because we have a text field, a password, or a, a username and a password field, right? Save this now and uh, jump back over to the browser, hit refresh. Uh, oops, okay, let's just refresh this way, right? Um, if you fill in information and then hit submit, uh, you can see we've got a not found error, the requested URL login.php was not found on the server. If you take a look at the URL up here, it's also set to login.php. So um, basically what happened here is if I go to my htdocs folder, uh, if I had another file here called login.php, we would have gone through to that file. But since this is uh, this file doesn't exist, it says not found, right? But you can always uh, uh, create that file and send the data through to that, uh, and it will submit through to that page. So um, just as a as an example over here, let's jump back over to htdocs. Let's copy this and then paste it again. Uh, index copy.html. Let's change this to login dot php, right? Um, and we'll use the php extension, drag that into our um, text editor over here, and then we'll just say, um, let's create a heading here and say file, uh, not file, but uh, data submitted. Submitted, all right. Okay, save this now. Um, Okay, and uh, let's try this again, because now we have login.php here, it actually exists, so let's hit submit. And uh, you can see that that has taken us through to the login.php page, and we know we're there because um, we added this heading of data submitted to this uh, page, and uh, that's what shows up over here, right? So uh, yeah, uh, right now this PHP file doesn't actually do anything, because like I said, we don't know PHP just yet, but uh, yeah, that's exactly how uh, this works. And now that you guys know all of that, I'll see you guys in the next video. I just wanna send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design, and web development, and they'll teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field, and they'll do it within 12 weeks. So check out their website, the link is in the description below, and if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you.
Special thanks to the guys whose names are on screen now. These guys contribute $5 or more on Patreon, and I really appreciate that. Uh, while you're still here, there are a few other things that you can do to help out. So follow me on social media and check out some more of my content, and I'll see you guys next time.